Carney friends, I'm Sarah Satch. Welcome to Friday Fun Day and Christmas in July. Now this last week we made the gnome hat for Christmas and we decided we needed a gnome beard. This is a really simple pattern and it's really easy to adjust. Now the pattern itself measures about 10 inches wide and it's about 8 inches long. You can make the beard even longer if you want to. Now, the best way to adjust this is to either go up or down a hook size. If it's coming out too small, go up a hook size or two. If it's coming out too large, go down a hook size or two. You can even use a larger yarn weight with a larger hook or a smaller yarn weight with a smaller hook to adjust the size. The key is to measure it across and see if it works. <laughs> it's super easy and super fun. And we wanted to make it separate from the hat, so we just added ear loops, just in case during your Christmas or maybe Halloween party, you get a little hot and you wanna take off that beard, but still wear your hat. You can just remove it from where it just hooks right on to your ears. Isn't that super fun? And the really cool thing about this beard is you don't have to wear it with the gnome hat. Make it in white and you've got a Santa beard. Or maybe make it in a brown and you've got a hunter's beard. <laughs> you can do whatever you want with this beard. We just wanted to make it so our gnome had a gnome hat and a gnome beard. And don't forget, you can find the pattern with pictures and all the information on my blog and I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. So I stitched up the demo or the test pattern using medium weight number four acrylic yarn. And this is the yarn that I used. I think it's called um, almond, but it might be a different color, maybe toasted almond. But it, this is a I love this yarn cotton that I had on hand and that's from Hobby Lobby. Now I wanted something that's a little bit fuzzy, but not too hairy. Sometimes the big hairy yarns are messy and also hard to see your stitches. And so I came across this yarn. This is Yarn B from Hobby Lobby. And it's really pretty. It has some fuzz to it. It's also medium weight number four. This color is Ivy and this color is called Oat. So, but it also, they also have a white, and you don't have to use this, of course. You can use any medium weight, number four, acrylic yarn, or even cotton, if you want to use cotton, will work, as long as it's a medium weight, number four, yarn. You're going to need approximately two ounces, probably a little less, depending on, you know, how tightly that you stitch. And we are using an H hook, which is a five millimeter. You need a needle and a pair of scissors. And that's all that you need to make our gnome beard. So I just wanted to make a quick correction about the yarn. This yarn here, this fuzzy yarn that I told you about, it is actually labeled as a bulky five, but this is medium weight number four, and this is this particular yarn. And the reason that it's labeled as a bulky five is because of these fuzzy hairs that are on it. You can see that the thickness of it is really about the same as our medium weight number four acrylic yarn. That's why I stated medium weight number four, okay? But they're just labeling this one as a bulky five because of the fuzz that's on it, okay? All right, so we're going to start with our slip knot and we're going to chain 28 chains. And I do recommend that you chain this beginning chain just a little bit loose. We don't want it to be too tight because we're going to be doing that. That's going to be across the top part that's underneath our nose. <laughs> All right, loosely chain 28 chains. I have chained 28 chains just a little bit loose. We're going to go in the second chain from the hook and stitch a single crochet and then we'll stitch one single crochet in each of those chains working all the way across. One single crochet 
in each of our chains working all the way across our row. We began in the second chain from the hook and then we stitched one single crochet in each stitch across. So we have 27 single crochets. We're going to chain one and turn our work. Now we're going to go right in that first single crochet and stitch one single crochet in the first 10. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now we're going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> and seven. And we're going to skip the next seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That leaves 10 stitches left. So we're going to single crochet in those last 10 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, <clears throat> seven, eight, nine, and 10 and chain one. And so what we've done there is this is how it's going to sit and we've formed our little mouth hole because this will sit right under our nose and now we'll begin stitching the bottom portion of our beard. All right, now for row three, we've chained one, we're going to turn our work, get some more yarn out here, and we're just going to go right in that first stitch and stitch one single crochet in each of the single crochets, then we'll stitch seven single crochets in this chain seven space, and then one single crochet in the last 10. And that will give us just a solid row of single crochets. And there are two ways you can do the little mouth opening. You can just go across it and stitch seven single crochets, which is what I'm going to do. But if you want to, if you prefer, you can put the seven single crochets in the seven chains. I'm just going to go around the chain. So there's two, three, four, five, six and seven. I like to do it this way when we're, when I'm doing an opening because I think it makes the opening a little more open opposed to having that row of chains right there and stitching into them. But you can do either way is fine. Just make sure you have seven single crochets for the chain. All right, and then we'll stitch those last 10. One, two, three. <clears throat> My voice is scratchy this morning. Must be allergies. All righty. All right, so we're going to chain one. And for row three, we have 10 single crochets, seven single crochets around our chain seven, and 10 single crochets. So we have 27 single crochets. We chained one, we're going to turn our work. Now what we're going to do with the first two single crochets is we're going to stitch a double crochet decrease. So we'll yarn over, go in that first single crochet and pull up a loop. Then we're going to go in the next single crochet and pull up a loop. You'll have four loops on your hook instead of three. Yarn over, go through the first three, yarn over and then go through the last two. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch a double crochet in the next 10 single crochets. So one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, so now, so what we're going to do next is in the next three single crochets, we're going to stitch two double crochets. So one and two, one and two, and one and two. And what we're doing is we're starting to shape the shape of the beard. So in those next three single crochets, we stitched two double crochets. And now we're just going to go back across and stitch 10 double crochets, and then we'll double crochet together the last two. I think this is six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, and that leaves two double crochets at the end, and we're gonna double crochet those together like we did over here. All right, so yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, then we'll go in the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through three, yarn over and go through the last two, and then we'll chain one. All right, so let's take a look at it real quick. You can see how it's starting to form the shape of our beard. It also makes the hole in our mouth opening a little bit bigger. So we have two and two on the end where we, where we did a decrease and double crocheted them together. We did 10 double crochets, and then in the center we did two double crochets in those three singles, and then 10 double crochets. Now we're ready for row five. So we're gonna turn our work. We're going to stitch the first two double crochets together. All right, now we're going to double crochet in the next 11 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And that brings us to those two double crochets right in the center. And in those two double crochets, we're going to stitch two double crochets. All right, so one and two, and then one and two. Okay, and that's just helping with that point that we want down in that center of our beard. And now we're going to double crochet in the next 11, and then we'll stitch the last two double crochets together. So I've stitched those 11. We're gonna stitch the last two double crochets together. And chain one. All right, so now it's even more pointed in the center and you're going to begin seeing how it's going to also taper down some on the sides. All right, so now we have completed row five. Now we're ready for row six. So we've chained one, we're gonna turn our work, we're gonna stitch our first two stitches together as we've been doing, and then we're just going to stitch one double crochet in each of the double crochets across until we reach those last two double crochets on our row and we'll stitch those two together. We're not doing any more 
increase stitches in the center of our beard. One double crochet in each, working across until we reach those last two double crochets. I have completed row six. We stitched the first two together in a double crochet decrease, one double crochet in each of our stitches across, and then we finished with a double crochet decrease or stitching two double crochets together. All right, so now we're ready for row seven, and row seven is exactly like row six. But one thing you're going to notice is every row we're going to be decreasing or stitching two double crochets together at the beginning and end of each row. And that's going to cause the bottom of the beard to decrease and so your stitches will also decrease. All right, so I stitched the first two together in a double crochet decrease, and now I'm double crocheting across the front of my beard. And when I get over here with the last two stitches, I'll stitch the last two together just like I did on row six. I have completed row seven. Again, we decreased at the beginning and end <clears throat> of each row, and we stitched one double crochet in each across. And so what you're going to do is you're going to continue to repeat row seven for five more rows, and you'll decrease every time, and it's going to cause the front of that to decrease on the sides and come to sort of a point like this one. Whoops! <laughs> As it comes down on the sides and kind of comes down. So we're going to repeat row seven for five more rows, decreasing at the beginning and end of each row. I have completed those five additional rows, and on your last row here, which is row 12, you should have 14 double crochets. That's your two decrease stitches and then 12 more in the middle, all right? And this is how big the beard will be. Now I'm going to show you now how to add the trim and the ear loops. But if you want your beard even longer and more pointy, you can continue to decrease down even more if you want your beard to have a point, and then do the trim, all right? I liked it about this length. I think it was good because it came down to the middle of my neck like right to the top of my of where my like chest bones are. I didn't want it real long, but if you want it a lot longer, you certainly can, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn our beard and we're gonna work up here to the fifth row, stitching evenly single crochets. And then we're gonna add those chains for the ear holes because we use, we're using little loops to um, hold the beard on. I did not want to attach it to the hat in case you like, say you're wearing it and you get a little hot and you want to take that beard off, you know, having a good time at your Halloween or Christmas party dressed up as a gnome and that beard can get a little bit hot. Okay, so I wanted this just to be removable, nice and easy and removable. All right, so I'm single crocheting up the side and we're going to go to the fifth row. So. One, two, three, four, five, which is right here. If you wanna mark that with, just, with a stitch marker, you can, or just a piece of yarn. And again, there's not a set amount of stitches. We're just stitching up the side till that fifth row. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna add one more single crochet. And now I'm going to chain nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. All right, and then I'm going to join to that first stitch on the top row with a slip stitch. That's going to be our ear hole on one side. Now we're just going to single crochet across 
the top, placing one single crochet in each one. So I'm going to chain one, go right in that first stitch, and just stitch a single crochet in each of the single crochets, working all the way across. I'm stitching a single crochet in each of the stitches, working all the way across, and then we're going to make that second ear hole, and then single crochet all the way back around where we started. I have single crocheted all the way across that top. It makes a nice edge. All right, so now we're going to chain one, and we're going to slip stitch right in that first stitch, and we're going to chain nine. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And now we want to join to the fifth row like we did over here. So what I do is I just follow my finger across and just join with our slip stitch. And then before I start single crocheting again, I make sure that it looks nice and lined up. And it does. And so now we're just going to single crochet all the way up down the side of this side evenly and we're going to go across the bottom of our beard as well and again there are no set amount of stitches when we're doing the even single crochet you just want it to look as nice and tidy as possible All right, so now I'm to the bottom of my beard. I've come back down this side. I'm going to place a single crochet in each of those single crochets and then join to that first single crochet where we started. And again, if you added more length or more point to the bottom of your beard, just single crochet around it exactly the same. You just have, you know, if you, if you decrease down, you'll have less stitches across the bottom, but more rows on the sides. <laughs> all right, so I'm all the way over where I started. One more single crochet in that corner, and then I'm going to join with the slip stitch to that first single crochet. There we go. Now this is the front, so I want to pull that string to the back, and then I'll weave it into the back. And I do have this other one I need to weave in as well. All right, so we'll go to the back, and we'll weave this in securely, and then I'll weave in that other one, and my gnome beard is ready to be worn with my gnome hat or whatever hat I want to wear it with. So here is the beige one that I did with just the medium weight number four yarn. And this is the one that I just did with the fuzzy yarn that remember it is marked as a bulky five because of the fuzz and they're relatively the same size. All right. And you can do these in any colors that you want, and they're super easy. And remember, if you want to make it a little bit smaller, go down a hook size or two. If you want to make it bigger, you can always go up a hook size or two. And also, if you want to go down a thread size to make it even smaller, you could do work it in a light three and use a smaller hook and you'd get a smaller beard for maybe for a smaller size child. Or you could go up to a bulky six and use a big hook, like maybe um, a J or something, and make it even bigger, doing everything exactly the same, and you'd get a bigger beard. All right? That's why this pattern is super versatile, because there aren't any tricky stitches, and it's super easy to size it up and down. Isn't this fun?